Chandigot Tower, helicopter Tango Delta Alpha is at Northern Apron, is ready for departure to the south. Helicopter Tango Delta Alpha, Chandigot Tower, Northern Apron, report everyone. Up we go, keep coming up, keep coming up. Chandigot Tower, Remy Whiskey, could be off his runway one, two, three, uh, three metal. Beautiful, Beautiful. Then everything looks good, he's airborne. Yep. Yep. Line up and oh, we'll just get line up and wait for Remy Whiskey, could be. Go for it, make that call. Tango Delta Alpha, you're coming airborne. Tango Delta Alpha. Cool. There's a plane over your right hand side there, so let's not go that way. Away we go. At max performance, so just set that thing at 23 and a half. Yep. Here's the takeoff from the power. You've still got quite a low power sitting there. Yep. Uh, that's it. So, like a 30 knot attitude. Uh, yep. So, you see, this is a max performance departure now. Yep. Height over speed. Beautiful. Okay, so I was trying to do an all transition. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, always max performance from the hangar. Yep. Beautiful. We're now established down the bottom here. You can turn parallel with duty runway. Yep. Tango Delta Alpha. Traffic is a Cessna 152, just airborne. We'll be making a left circuit departing via Fremantle. When ready, make a right turn and pass behind the Cessna. Pass behind the Cessna. Right hand turn. Tango Delta Alpha. Beautiful. Now we're cruising from point A to point B. Yep. You don't move the collective, okay? You need to set the collective 20 to 21 yep. and use the cyclic only. And your, the, the gauge that's actually the most useful to you here is this one. Yep. If that's showing a climb, go faster. Yep. That's all you need to do is just go a bit faster. And that's essentially how you're controlling your altitude when you're cruising. Yep. Yes, we have these climb profiles to try and gain, you know, hundreds or thousands of feet. But in the cruise, even if you find you're 100 foot high, just push the nose forward. Yep. Accept a slightly faster speed. That'll show a descent. And you might only have to descend at 100 feet per minute to get it back down. Yep. It's better to do that rather than move the collective because ultimately you'll just be high, then you'll be low, then you'll be high, then you'll be low, and um, it'll just result in over controlling. The next thing is, is we've probably got five minutes before we get to our spot, so you can use the cyclic trim as well. Yep. Have you used the cyclic trim before? No. Okay. So it's down here next to the mixture. Yep. That's the most dangerous part about using the cyclic trim, apart from that, it's a piece of piss. So you'll identify it. Confirm by looking at your hand physically being on it and, and then of course up. selecting it. So you can go for it now, pull it up. Yep, yep. it just pulls up, that's correct. Confirm and select. Boom. Right, now you feel the where the cyclic force is coming from has now changed. Yep. And because it's on a linkage system, there's no hydraulics, you the dynamic forces from the main rotor actually you get a feedback through the through the cycle. And all that is is a bungee yeah, to help alleviate that force, that's all that is. Yeah, so it now feels like a Yeah, it feels a bit more sensitive. Um, and that dynamic force is only really there in full climb. Yeah. So you, the trim is a pre-landing item. That is that if you're going from the cruise to landing, you know, like we talked when we did circuits, yep. trim is part of that checklist. Yep. Alrighty, so the wind was, um, well, where is it coming from actually? Uh, good morning. Well, actually, yeah, so it was uh, probably eight as it was uh, bearing 130. Okay, yep, cool, which is a uh, south easterly. Yep. Beautiful, so yeah, sort of not far off the nose at the moment, probably yep. just about a bit more out to the left. Yep. Um, okay, so let's let's assume that that's still the case out here, um, and that is the direction that we're going to conduct our flares into. Yep. However, we're going to have a look and see if there's additional cues available to us down here to detect where the wind's coming from. What could we be looking for? Smoke. Smoke. Is it smoke? No. Me either. What else we got? Uh, we've got a pool of water over there. Cool. What does the water say to us? Turn left to another five degrees and we'll be in it. Yeah, pretty much. That direction. Yeah. Yep, so you're looking for the smooth area on the dam as compared to the rippled area. Yep. Beautiful. And that there shows that the wind is definitely pretty much you know, virtually on the nose at the moment. Regardless of whether we're doing an autos lesson or we're doing, I don't know, navigation, yeah. I want you to always be looking at those. Oh, look at that dam. The wind's coming from over here. Yep. And what you will find is that the wind might be a southwesterly here and when we get 50 miles over the hills, the, the sea breeze is no longer uh, an influence and it's a prevailing easterly. Yep. You can have the wind change 180 degrees and only 50 miles, you know, when you have those localised things. Yep. Um, so yeah, I always want you looking at those sorts of things as we're flying along. Okay, we are approaching our area now. I want you to help me with the hassle checks. Yep. So first thing is first, what's the H for? Height. Height. Cool. Is the height yeah. sufficient? Yeah. Level at 2000? Yep. Beautiful. That's height sufficient for the exercise. Yep. Area, is it suitable? Yep. Lots of paddocks. Beautiful. What else can you see down there? Uh, trees, the hazards, cool. the river. Power line down here. 
Yep. High voltage transmission lines running down the west side of our course. Yep. We're going to pick a paddock up here shortly. I'll show you where it is. Yep. Um, so that's not, not going to be too much of a factor. The good thing is I know this area quite well. I've been here a hundred times. So, yep. um, yeah, well, um, I've already sort of reconnaissance and stuff. Yep. Okay, that's the area S. Uh, security, nothing's going to fly around in the cockpit. Beautiful. Hatches and harnesses are good. Yep. Okay, what about engine? So, or E. Uh, engine uh, rotor up into the green. Yep. And uh, T's and P's are in the green. So it's basically just a, um, yep. we really use the engine prop to just be a pre-landing check. So, warning lights out, RPMs normal, T's and P's, sufficient fuel. Switches, a set radio, set transponder. Oh, look at this. Carby. Trim. Yeah, and carby lockers on as well. Exactly. So, let's get the trim in. The, the carburetor head to heat on. That's it. Oh, I felt that. Yeah, and you can feel that. And cool, car ready, identified, confirmed, and selected on full. Full, oh, good. Yep, got it, yep. Beautiful. Alright, now we're cool. going to go to this paddock down here in the bottom corner, yep. so you can start heading in that direction. Turning. Car ready, heat's on full. And obviously, last but not least, is lookout. Now I'm going to swap over to the CTAF here now. Yep. I imagine it's going to be reasonably quiet. Yep. Serpentine traffic helicopter R22 Tango Data Alpha is currently four miles to the north of Serpentine Field, maintaining 2000. We're shortly uh, commencing auto rotative practice to a position four miles to the north of field, not above 2500 in the next two zero minutes, Serpentine. Okay, here we go. Engine failure. Practice. Practice. Our power line's right in front of us. That's it. Yep, got them sighted. Great. So here comes the RPM and check. Yep. Okay. So, RPM is set. Airspeed, a little bit high. I'm yep. not too worried about it. I'm not going to make a huge attitude adjustment. I'll just let it creep down slowly. Now, I am intending to land over here. The RPM is, a, you know, what, a percent or two low, isn't it? Yep. We might even get the horn, surely. Yep. No, no. Okay. Well, even if I... So, I'll probably get that RPM restored to do that. Yep. Just check the clayter down a little bit. That's it. I don't want you to push it all the way down because it's just going to result in it going high. Yep. We're no winds on our left-hand side, so I'm going to incorporate a gentle turn here. Alright, power lines, the last one here is beneath us now. Yep. Airspeed is good, RPM is good. Target's achievable, we're into the breeze. Beautiful. That's that's it, this is as easy as it gets. We've entered and we've established. I've done nothing with that collective apart from that one tiny, tiny check. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Hands going back on the collective now, eyes outside. I've still got full control for this one. Yep. Here we go, start the flare, check the nose up. We've stopped descending. we started descending again, check the nose up more. Now it funnels in and level. Yep. And that's it. So, like I was saying, and I'm just going to land here, tail's clearly there, so that's why yep. I'm turning. Yep, yep. And so you'll notice I've turned there just because I could see the tail was clear. Yep. Beautiful. So, it's done as a perception, yep. that flare. There's no, you always flare this much because it changes every single time, um, we, you know, depending on where the wind's coming from and, the, and the, how the aircraft's loaded and how much fuel we've got depends on how much you'll need to flare and what the what it's going to do. You would have also noticed that when I flared in, I did nothing with the collective. I didn't need to because the flare was nice and gentle and progressive. We've got a great surface wind down here, so we will get very effective flares. And that one there, you really felt the thing start to slow down, didn't you? It just yep. basically stopped, right? So that's exactly what, how I want you to do these. But before we come right through to the ground like this, we're going to do some entries. And we might do four or five entries. Yep. Once we're happy and comfortable, then we'll start having a look down to this position here. A yep. couple of things I want to point out now that we're down here. Power lines on this side, yep. I'm going to keep a really good eye on those, okay? I don't want you focusing on them. Yep. I'll make sure that we don't go anywhere near them. Cows over here, we don't want to stir them up either. So we are going to, if we are shooting our auto quite deep into this paddock towards the east here, or towards the southeast, we may potentially go around because I don't want to stir the cows up. Yep. Other thing here is there is a single wired fence running through this paddock. I can see it. Great. If we're near that, we may potentially um, steer around it. But again, I'll watch those things, okay? Yep. Um, apart from that, I want you to just maintain the parameters. You've got control. I've got control. You can pick us up and fly away. When we do fly away, avoid this area here. Yep. So into winds in that direction anyway. So you might just climb up. As soon as we get some air, positive airspeed, we'll make a right turn and head to the south as we climb up. Gotcha. All right, powering up. All yours. There we go, I'll check, good to go, I'm turning to the right, get us off in that direction. And always max performance out of tight, uh, well it's not a tight area, but an unknown area. Yep. 
all cows here. We'll start already making a turn towards the south. He had positive airspeed, so perfectly safe to do so. Yep. Don't want to run any cows into fences either. Well, we just don't want to raz them up because I don't want. Um, I don't want to run into fences. A very friendly farmer down here. Yep. Getting annoyed with us. Well, so we're virtually just stay over this unpopulated area here as we climb on up. Yep. Get you to take us up to, I don't know, let's go to 2000 again. Yep, so go down this way, loop around, come back. No, no, just, just, uh, just a gentle climbing orbit basically. Okay, yep. So just a really gentle right hand turn. Speed at 60, power at its maximum. Yep, up we go. Okay, so for the first ones, it really doesn't matter where the wind's coming from. Because we're not going through to the ground anyway. I just want to practice these entries. So let's just head off in this direction for the time being. Continue the climb. Yep. Enter, establish, and when we get down to about another thousand feet, throttle will come back in and we'll fly back up to two thousand. Yep. Okay. Up. Uh, right. You have control, I have the throttle only, okay? Eyes out in front. Yep. Remember you're gonna lower the collective swiftly and promptly. Half cyclic and right pedal to maintain trip. I've got the throttle, got you have everything else. Engine failure, practice. Beautiful. Alright, so we'll go back to 60. Check that RPM. Don't worry about that speed too much yet. Yep. Because what you're doing is you're actually trying to manipulate the speed by looking at the gauge there. Just fly an attitude. So eyes outside. Yep. If all the hard work's done now, the RPM's set, the speed's pretty well right. Just get a little bit more smidge and right pedal there. Yep. That's it. Job done, mate. You join the needles. Wind the RPM to 80%. Uh, so what? You increase the throttle to 80%, let the governor do the rest. Uh, now? Yep. Yep. That's it, just to 80, don't wind it all the way up. Okay, yep. raise collective, raise collective, fly away. Beautiful, back up to 2,000. Yep, that felt a lot better than last time. That felt, good, felt fine to me. A couple little refinement things there, but n nothing too crazy at all. Yep. Your collective, the rate at which you lowered the collective was good. Your half cyclic was good. I did feel like you were trying to watch this gauge almost immediately. You worry about the airspeed to start with, okay? Yep. Get the RPM sorted and established, then you can worry about the airspeed after. And when you are going to 60 knot attitude, not on the gauge. It's still flying attitude, no different to forward flight, okay? Yep. yep. Um, actually, what I found helped a lot was just set the collective and forget about it. Yeah, totally. Uh, last time I was I have to constantly manage that. So. Yeah, don't have to. And like I said, the next one, if, if it's all going well, I'll make you take your hand off of it. Yep. Once the RPM's set, hand on your leg. I'll show you how easy it is. Boy, it did, did that time. I, I had it set and then I didn't touch it didn't again. Didn't touch it, yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. Clear. Yep. Engine failure, practice. Yep. Engine failure, practice. 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 Engine Join the needles. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. So when you're joining the needles like that, yep. remember, only let it go to 80%, okay? okay so yep. go again. You're not winding it up to 100%, okay? You'll overspeed it. So just go to 80. Increase it to 80. There you go. Yep. Now raise collective. Gotcha. That's all I want you to do. So you felt me grab the throttle there, but it's only because I didn't want the needle to go high. Yep, gotcha. Apologies. That's right. Let the governor do the hard work for you, basically. Yep. But can that damage the... Oh yeah, absolutely, you can overspeed the motor. We could, we could, we could um, you know, do criti like quite critical damage to the motor if it went really high, yeah, but I wouldn't allow that to happen, of course. Yep. Okay, I was at front. You have control, I have the throttle only. Yep. Engine failure, practice. Alright, so I went to deck collective. Don't let it get too high. Uh, yep, cool. Uh, holding 60. Cool. Now yep. prove it to yourself. Left hand on your leg. Yep. Cool. Not touching either. Now, a changes in attitude will result in changes in RPM. So push the nose forward. Yep. Away we go. So speed adopt is 75. Yep. Yes, you'll see an RPM drop. The horn's going to come up. There it is. Yep. So nose right. back. Yep. Speed up. Now half cyclic. Watch the RPM climb. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yep. Cool. Now that's fine. We have done nothing with the collective. Neither you or I are touching it at the moment. Yep. It's absolutely fine to let it range between there. That's the allowable range, okay? Yep. You join the needles. Join the needles, getting it to 80. And That's raising it. collective. What I don't want you...
you to do, particularly when we start doing variable speed autos, yep. is that when the RPM drops 2 or 3%, or raises 2 or 3%, that you immediately feel like you need to jump onto the collective. It's not the case, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's only if it's going to, if it's at 105 and it's still accelerating through. Absolutely, yep. you need to do something. Or if it's down at 95 and it's still dropping. Absolutely, lower that collective flare up. Definitely. But for those small fluctuations, not required. Gotcha. All right, so those entries and establishments are actually quite good. Let's do one more, then we'll look at the flare. Go on. You have control. Have control. And your value practice.
20 knots up there, yeah. providing that by the time we got through to the flare, you were back at 60 knots. Okay, so that is the only time that it's critical. So don't uh, resist the urge to see the ground coming and wanting to slow down, okay? You've got to maintain the speed. Yep. Um, but apart from that, you actually entered quite well, you established really well, and I was quite happy with that flare. You kept the tail behind us the entire time, and we weren't drifting sideways at all, so looking quite good. Let's do the exact same thing again. No all right, all yours. We're a little uh, right skid low because of the mud, but yep. it's all right. I'll throw it lower up. Cool, and when you pick it up from here, you want to be you know, reasonably careful that you... Um, Don't come drag. Yeah, that. that's right, you come vertically up because it's a lot of hoof prints around and yep. it's you know, potential for rollover. Yep, no worries. Okay, so this time, I'm going to say anything, okay? okay. Well, you, we're going to do the exact same thing, but you're going to do the whole lot. Uh, you got control. I got control. Uh, there's trouble. Engine failure. Practice. Alright. So, picking up here. Getting to 60 knot attitude out there. And right that long name to the right of that little bush out on its own. We really feel that we're dropping straight down, but I know that we're not because the Speed says we're doing 665. That's right, I probably only got 45, 50 knots of ground speed, but yep. Uh, RPM's looking good. Old 60, not slowing down. Watch that fence and power line. Cool, just for the purpose of making it over the power line, make sure you hold that 60 to 70, mate. Yeah, I've actually yep. slowed down, yep, no worries. That's slowing down, we'll just reduce our range. Yep, nose. Maintaining 60, not slowing down. Nose forward. Maintain 60 for the flare. Clear of all obstructions, I'm following you through, but you've got full control. Don't hear that. Maintaining 60, not slowing down. Maintaining 60, not slowing down. And we're... flaring. Don't go to in-ground effect here, just stay out of ground effect for the time being. Yep. And then the reason is we've got these high shrubs around. Yep. Pick somewhere to land that you, th that you can see is suitable. Yep. Alrighty, cool. What did you think about that? Oh yeah, well, I went to throw it down as well. Oh, sorry, sorry mate, I did that for you. Um, I think I may have... Um, oh, well, the good thing is I caught the engine with the left pedal. But I think I may have uh, left it a bit late to flare, and then when I did I was very ginger with the flare. Yeah, I actually don't think the flare was too bad. I think that you probably could have even flared a smidgen later with the amount of wind that we've got today, but that's neither here nor there, because we still, it was still an effective flare. Yeah, I'm sure it maybe was a tiny bit too high when we terminated at the end, but that's okay. Um, the only thing was with the flare is that we were actually moving laterally. Did you feel us moving towards the right during the flare? No, I didn't know. So we're that. actually, you were flaring with the tail behind us, but we started to move sideways towards the right as well. Um, with, um, so yeah, anyway, that's what I was sort of saying before in the brief, try and always keep it nice and straight with the flare, tail's always behind us, and um, that we're not, there's no lateral movement, it's always forward. And the reason that we harp on about that, of course, is that you, if you did have to accept a couple of knots of run on, is that the skids are straight in direction of travel, that is that you're not flying sideways, yep. which will of course result in dynamic rollover. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, the flare, the auto descent, obviously you slowed down a little bit there, but um, overall it wasn't too bad. You did detect it. The only reason I even bothered saying anything was because I wanted to make sure we made it over the top of those power lines. Yep. Apart from that, I wouldn't. I would have just let you monitor and do it yourself. I didn't want to stay at 50 knots for too long because I was worried our range would be reduced. Yep. Um, but ultimately, you, you know, you started entering and you and you managed it. I didn't do anything. Um, the flare, I didn't do anything. I just went on the throttle and that was it. Um, so let's. So we've got time for one more. Let's do one more and we'll go home, okay? No worries, so I'll throttle her up. This time we'll just go to 1,500. Yep. Oh, why did it do that? Because you're winding the throttle up too much, okay? Right. So uh, uh, this is actually, what you did then was similar to what you did before. Yep. And that is, when you're winding the throttle up, you're trying to wind it to 100% for some reason. Okay, yep. And you're doing it quite aggressively. The reason I know you're winding the throttle quite aggressively is because the manifold pressure is raising all the way up to 23 inches. Yep. Watch, watch this. Yeah, gotcha. Slow. Well, now watch, watch when, even when the governor grabs it, watch the manifold pressure. 20 and a half maximum. Every time so far I've seen 22 to 23 inches. That means that you're forcing it through. Let the governor do it, okay? Yep. Cool. Alright. That light's out.
Area's clear. Raising power. As soon as you gain ETL, there you go. Yep. Just hold it here, that's better. Yep. This is like a best angle of climb departure. Okay. This sort of departure is ideal for confined area ops. Yep. Or an area that you're not 100% sure whether there's an obstruction you haven't seen, you know? Yep. Okay, now you can go to normal profile and yep. away we go. Away from these cows, which should turn to the right. Yep. So. Power's at 23 and a half, 69 altitude, and establishing trim. Outside. Don't look at the ground around us, it will give you no indication of, of anything virtually, yeah, apart yeah. from a, a ground rust and rush sensation and generally over controlling. Yep. Seems clear. Yeah, control over the throttle. Over control. And your failure practice. Taking up here. And this time you'll definitely need to maintain that 70. Yep. Okay, I'll keep the nose forward then. assess the area as, as flat enough yep. that you're not going to lower collective and it tips back or something. Yep. Cool. Um, the uh, speed was, you managed that quite well. Um, the flare was probably initially a little too aggressive. Yep. Probably could have been a little bit slower and a little bit more progressive. You sort of went flaring and then and really got into it straight away. It wasn't so much that we started climbing, but it was probably just a smidgen too aggressive. But it wasn't that. It wasn't that bad at all. In fact, you did develop it quite effective. 
you did level it at the end and you just over controlled the pedals a little bit and you even told me that so you, you recognised it virtually as you did it that is that you anticipated probably a little bit too much with the left pedal which resulted in you then pushing right then pushing left again so that was why we did a little bit of this sort of stuff yep. overall it was actually pretty good mate I'm pretty happy with that I think you should be too ok cool the only thing I want to do before we depart here is just demonstrate actually we're sort of running out of fuel yep. um, yeah let me just do it really quickly no. so Camera heats in, I've got full control, yeah, pre-takeoff cool. checks are complete. And I just want to show you a fast flare. Sure. So I want to prove to you that you can flare fast, you just can't flare slow. And all you've got to do with a really fast flare is just be even more gentle with the attitude. So the faster you come through, the more gentle you are and the more progressive you need to be. Keep the speed on here, and I'll maintain it the entire way through. Yep. Okay, engine failure practice. Don't worry about the horn, I'll go away in a second. Passing the power line now. Yep. Clear. Okay, speed's really high. Fence is actually out to the right hand side this time. Yep. Watch how gentle I've got to be with the flare. Look at this, I'm just a flat attitude now. Still not descending, still not descending, still not descending. Okay, probably just starting to sink now, a little bit more. Still not descending, still not descending. Now I've got to wrap it up. Now I've got to level. Gotcha. Okay, so you can see just how far the flare goes with a high speed. Yep. Um, that's all I wanted to prove to you. You're better faster than slow. Yep. You've just got to anticipate that you need more room when you're fast, that's all. Yeah, There's yeah. our single wire there. Yep. Passing it now. Away, you have full control, let's go 6 south. I've got 